Welcome to DSTV Roundtable with me, Donovan Goliath. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, being the incredibly influential person that I am, um, I managed to get uh, these very busy people, uh, you know, right here with me. One phone call, one WhatsApp, that's all it took. I've got, let's call them, yeah, they're, they're quite serious questions here, right? But I really want to get into the meat of, I think, a very, very important question that a lot of people have been, uh, keep, they keep throwing it around. What do you think the international industry can learn from our local industry? And likewise, what do you think our local industry can learn from the international industry? If I had to say something in terms of comparing the two, what we can learn I think is to be bolder and bigger. I think mm. we, we step back a bit mm. when we actually need to think not about producing a show for this country, but producing a show from this country that exactly. can be taken to the global stage because we have the most incredible stories to tell here and we have such creative minds. I think all of the pain and suffering that we've been through, yeah. we've used it to, mm. and channeled it to, to make us creative. So I don't think we must stand back. I think we must take our place. And I know that it's not always easy to just walk in the door and say, hey, I'm here. But I think, I think we shouldn't be standing back anymore. And there are a lot of things that hold us back, funding and, and having that platform. But yeah. if there were no restrictions, mm. what would we do? And I think we should be starting to create content. That should be the starting point. Like if the world was my oyster and I had no restrictions, what would I make? But that's the thing, being a content creator for yourself and all of us being content creators in our own mind, whether it's on a channel or if it's your YouTube channel or whatever. The thing is, there are so many stories to tell coming from our country. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. And it's going to still be a process. But then you speak to people higher up in the industry and all they want is the cookie cutter Hollywood story mm. with the storyline A, B and C. The girl meets the boy and just add a little bit of South African flair, please. Mm -hmm. That is what they ask of us. But if, that is, don't, if they don't want us to reinvent the wheel, that's fine. But don't we have more to tell than just that? Apparently, we are the second oldest film industry in the world. And so our crews, who have been shooting international movies for many decades, can do anything. Mm. It's our stories usually that are a bit undercooked, I think. Yes. For, and this is for scripted or non-scripted. The format of our reality or actuality shows are not always, it doesn't do that one last twist of the, sou of the souffle yes. to really make it be able to translate overseas. So what I really like about the time we're in now, and I think we will have to lean into it as the economy is going down a bit, is it feels to me like we are now where some of the other countries in terms of content production were in the 70s, where it's a bit of the, it's like the Wild West. Mm -hmm. um, we can still, there are rules about a curfew, we have to be, like when we were allowed to go jogging, you could quickly shoot something in Delta Park and then nine o'clock just get out again, <laughs> which is technically you're not allowed to, but technically you are allowed to. Yes. So the gray zone is suddenly quite big and I like that because I think that's where countries can really start finding their own identity, narrative identity, where people are allowed to think outside of the box and make things in this gray zone. And I think f what I like about now is it feels like that again, whether it's uh, fiction or non-fiction or scripted or non-scripted, you shoot a little show in your garage or what, uh, how, wherever you shoot your show, it's, it's very you and it can only happen through you where I think maybe in the future when the, when the industry starts formalizing, all kinds of new rules and things are gonna get set up, like the permits and the, the red tape and the bureaucracy and the, yeah. 
And here we can just go, khoi, cowboy. And no, I like that. Beard, I, sorry, Donovan, I just wanted to add with what Janina sure, no said. Problem. I mean, I do an agriculture show, right, and a social issues show. I would love to do an arts program and a theater program. They're not going to say I'm allowed to do that because they're going to say the viewers yeah. don't want to watch it. Yeah. So we are still self, there after man, 30 yeah. years or yeah. whatever. But, but if you watch what South Africans consume on an international market, yep, exactly. what they consume is much more risque mm. to, to the things that South Africans that we locally yeah. produce. But, exactly. but if you show them that, Nia, no. Yes, it's, no. Almost like, it's almost like if it's overseas, it's, it's removed. Okay. Okay. So I can watch yeah. that, but it's because it's not happening next door. Yeah. But, but the yeah. question is, why are we still underestimating our audiences? Yeah. That's, Why? That's a good because question. our audiences are yeah. fantastic, you know. Yeah. Now then, you have people who have petitions. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you see, you see the other thing, and I, and I like that you brought Twitter up. Is mm. apart from watching international shows, I think that we're so globally exposed now, yeah. just with social media. Like, there's there's nothing people haven't seen. There's nothing they yeah. haven't been exposed to. I think exactly. meme culture and all of these things. We've really, you know, you'll see a popular meme and kind of wonder where, what is the source of this image, mm -hmm. this gift that you've used. Mm -hmm. I often do that, I don't know if yeah. you do too. I wanna go and see what show is this that they keep pulling <laughs> yeah. from. Now you're hooked onto something that mm -hmm. you've never, ever, ever been exposed to ever, you know? So people are really getting fed all of these things. And I like, I like that idea of, not that idea, I like what you're saying. Why do we undermine the audiences? But I also like what you said, Roz. Um, if you had the funding and the facilities and you had all of these opportunities, what would you do? to switch up the industry? Where would you put your money? Where would you invest? I would invest in black female filmmakers. I think it's so important to, to build up that group specifically because I think for so long we haven't really had a voice mm. and we haven't been in the room. And that's why I started my company because I want to be in the room. I want to be making the decisions. I want to be creating content that is reflective of the group that I'm in because for so long we, we haven't had a voice. Mm. So I think it's, it's imperative that we go and find the talent and we say, here you go. You don't, you haven't had a voice before, here's a microphone. What can we do? Fantastic. Yelena? Mm. Oh, I just, I just want to travel and do my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make TV shows with me as the anchor and the presenter and the content producer and I'm going to see the world. <laughs> I mean, there is an amazing show in that, in a South African, for example, who has never traveled before, now given an opportunity. Here is a world ticket. Send this person to Prague and go and experience the craziness that happens in Prague, but you have never been exposed to any of this. Amazing! Whoever feels like they are they're ready and strong enough to answer this question, please do. And that question to all of you is, what do you think the international industry can learn from our local industry? And likewise, what do you think our local industry can learn from the international industry? Kate, I'll sorry, start. I had to, yeah, I'll sure, start. sure. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start on the positive. Okay. What the international industry can learn from us, I think there's, I think we make films and television series probably three times faster, maybe even sometimes four times faster yeah. than internationals. Oh. But, and sometimes it's got negative connotations, but there's something about that like cowboy from the hip rawness to a lot of our films and television where you've got two takes mm -hmm. maximum that comes with South African actors who just bring it who are yeah. just there and ready to dance and ready to play, that it's not this reserved performance, always waiting, waiting, mm. we'll do the wide, we'll do the mid, and then it's on your close-up. It's just, you gotta hit it. Okay, now we've got 20 minutes for the scene, we're just gonna do a two shot, mm. steady cam, and that's all we've got, we've got one shot. And there's something about it mm. where it's your, sometimes it's your first take. Often it's the first take I've found that, that actually makes it. Mm through the edit because it's raw, because it's real, be mm. it's real. Mm. And that it, there's something beautiful in that. 
given it's not always nice to only have one take or two take for, for time's uh, sake. Yes. Um, but the, it's something that, that I've learned to love. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry for, okay. <laughs> 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 so, to be quite honest, in my experience of acting, I started acting in an international movie, mm. which was Catch a Fire in 2006. So from that period to now, I've, uh, I actually have like three international movies, which both, um, okay. it was both Mandela movies, which was the Invictus with the rugby, mm -hmm. and then another one with actually Long Walk to Freedom. Mm. So the experience that I got that I think uh, South African uh, film or TV industry could learn from that is that how they treat actors, mm. you know? You get into an international movie like you get with your clothes, Right? When you're changing for old drop, they change everything, you know, to the tip. You get mm. what I'm saying? You don't have your own accessories or anything. And you have your own space and you get ADs who are there for you to give you water or anything you need. You get time to prepare. You get, like, everything is uh, catered for actors. You get what I'm saying? And then when it comes to our um, television or film industry, everything is fast. Mm. It's quick and like the thought process even of getting into that character. How but you don't get time to prepare. You, you get you cast and then a week later you're on set yeah. shooting. So like, often. And you're shooting like, uh, uh, you get like, yo, stunts, man. You know, simple thing is stunts. International movies that actually, uh, when you have to shoot a gun, they'll give you like three days to go to a shooting range where they show you how get to use a car yeah. and get mm. comfortable. Here, yeah, like, okay, out of the blue, oh, Take the movie, gun. I shoot the gun. <laughs> then I'm like, you know, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, because uh, uh, um, uh, Munindli, uh, may her soul rest in peace, uh, she passed on uh, in those COVID times, mm. uh, but she's the one that gave me an opportunity and I chose that. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I want to study. That's mm. the only thing I asked from her. I don't want no opportunity to be on TV, nothing. I asked for her to take me to school, and she gave me a bursary to go to NSA. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. You see, yeah, that's what, yeah, she was like my mom. The first time I saw money, it was coming from her. She took care of me and everything. Yeah. So I actually have that experience of, of working in international movies that are coming uh, from uh, seas, coming this side, you know? But all I'm saying is that if we just learn, even if we learn from that of, of like, you know, how we handle our actors. And then when it comes to payments and everything, everything will be just yes. sweet, you know? Yeah. Mm. Anybody have a different perspective on this side? No, I think that um, um, it's not that our casting agents or companies or um, production houses don't know how to treat us as local actors because when international actors come, they do treat them. Um, mm. exactly mm. the way that they are used to being treated in America or mm. wherever uh, they're coming from. I think it's also, we are also so grateful for the work that we sell ourselves short. And as long as you give me a little space where I can just change, I'm so grateful. And it's, it's nice to be like that. But I think um, I saw a meme that says once you become too, too, too uh, grateful, people start uh, taking you for granted. Not grateful, mm -hmm. but too nice. And, and you're just like, okay with everything. And, um, and I think the international standard has been set so high that they are not used to anything less. And we are, we have become accustomed to taking on so much more and um, just being grateful for the fact that we are here and yeah. which is not a bad thing but I think when we now start seeing the difference when an international actor comes and we're acting mm. together but we are treated like night and day mm. um, <coughs> and that is yeah. that is I think what the big problem is. I also think we are still stuck in in hiring people who are going to become our free marketing campaign, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. skilled artists are losing out on work because they don't have the social clout mm. that someone who yeah, has so gone to school. Mm -hmm. So you're either going to cast me for this role because I'm oh. good enough, oh. or you are not going to cast me. Whether my numbers are bigger than Kate's or not bigger than mm. Kate's shouldn't factor in. It should be a At bonus all. for you. It shouldn't be the primary reason why you employ me. Popularity 
cannot trump skill. Second to that, we got to go, how do we regulate salaries here? How is someone like Robert, for example, going onto a set with someone like Zola and getting paid less because he has 100,000 followers, followers and Robert has 1,000? It should never happen. I'm okay mm. not getting the job if it means that I wasn't, I wasn't good, good enough for, for the, the job. Role. I am not okay not getting the job because someone else outnumbered me. The thing that I don't get though about the whole hiring influencers thing is that when you hire an influencer, you're, you're, you're hiring them based off their following. Cool, sharp. But their following is for them. Mm. The people who follow this person are following them because of their content. I want to ask Robert, who is the OG, what are your thoughts around this? I've been um, in the business since 1976. And it's still the same story. We're still doing, going on about the, the moans are the same, the complaints are the same. There's a fundamental sameness that it mm. just goes on and on and on and on mm. about the South African business mm. and the South African actors and South African payment and all the things that we are unhappy with. Um, there's not one single thing that's new except for the uh, social, social me media. media stuff that has definitely uh, clearly impacted on, mm -hmm. on, on what's happening. Mm -hmm. I do think that um, what we could learn from international uh, industries is not to settle for mediocrity. Yes. Mm. Mm. Because, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the nature in which we produce the work. We, it's kind of like very fast and we have to punch and get things in the can very quickly. But I just, from my personal experience, f feel that as creatives, we really need to allow ourselves to pursue excellence and not, not just settle for like 65%. I would be okay if I went to 10 auditions in a year and they said, no, they, you, I didn't make it. Then I'm like, the problem is with you, Lorsha. You need to go back to the drawing board. You need to sharpen your craft. I'm fine with that. I'm a colored performer in this country. And let me tell you that my reality on this side of the fence is I don't even get briefs. I don't even get briefs and I don't see if there's a show that's running for a year why you were sending me a brief for a character that's going to be gone in two months. Why am I not either support or lead mm -hmm. at this point in my career? Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not taking that two month contract because I know my worth. Mm -hmm. I'm worth more than those two months because then I've now overexposed myself on a show that I could have had a long standing Yes. Um, um, yeah. career on, right? I, I, I cannot accept that. It's not an easy pull for me to swallow. So why am I still in the position now where when I started in the industry, people still remember Charmaine, then they still remember Erin. Like then I had opportunities as a colored performer. Now there's not even a brief for me. I'm completely marginalized. Nothing is written with me in mind. So what do I have to do as a performer now? I have to go, okay, Lorsha, it's your turn to become a creator. What if I don't want to be a creator? Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. What if I don't want to step into director shoes and producer shoes? What if I am quite happy just being a storyteller and telling the story from an actor's perspective? Hey, Losha, 30 years mm. time, you're going to be that colored auntie that's going to tell stories. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're sitting in the kitchen on. late at yeah. night. Or she's going. going to be like Robert and say, no comment. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm spoken now. That's going to be a vlog <laughs> tonight. Don't need any of this. I'm over it. <laughs> what would you guys then suggest, um, you know, the industry does? Where do you see right. the industry, say in five to 10 years time, what would you like to see then? Because it's going to need time, you know, to fix mm. a lot of these things that you're talking about. I'll start with you, Didi craft first. Mm. The beauty about South African audiences is that they want to see fresh faces, they want to see different actors playing different roles and different stories being told. So open up the industry. Mm. 
and not so that we don't have to sit on social media trying to post instead of studying our lines and actually um, and getting yeah. deeper into our yeah. craft because now this phone is always here oh okay oh, oh I lost five more followers okay but I also have to study 10 scenes for tomorrow and you know what I mean so I love what you just said um, so I've thought about the solution um, to, to this quite extensively and because I also believe like if, if you have a problem but you're not searching for solution, you're just moaning, mm. Mm. really. Um, and I would plea with broadcast, broadcasters to change how they approach these jobs, mm. how they approach um, and have their first conversations with producers. We look at producers and our first port of call is to blame the producer. Mm. The producer has someone above them mm. yes. who is the broadcaster. Mm. So really the conversation needs to be had with the broadcaster, mm. you know, uh, about what's allowed, what's not allowed. We, we, we are treating the, the byproduct of a root cause. Mm. The root cause is let's have a conversation with broadcasters and mm. producers and it's not gonna get solved here mm. because if we, even if we decided, okay, uh. tools down, we are not gonna work. Let me tell you, they replace us with it's someone so who's, who's 4,000 so rand cheaper than we yeah. are and then they're happy because yeah. what is it? No, it's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. You can't treat art about the bottom line all the time. It is an art. Kate, what would you like to see change in the next five to ten years? Just to standardize, my biggest thing is standardization of payment. Mm -hmm. To not go into a conversation anxious because I know I'm going to have to fight. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm honest here, it's not fighting for a lot. I, I, it's, I'm not making big money. Yes. It's fighting for little. Mm. And it's, I, mean. I don't, I, I, I've, I've loved all the work that I've done. I've been so, I've worked for the work that I've gotten, but I've loved every second and I've, I'm so happy that I've done it and it's been sheer joy. Mm -hmm. But it's just that negative part of knowing that you're going in for a bit of a fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's draining mm -hmm. to start, to start mm -hmm. on, on the back foot mm -hmm. like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. on a negative note rather than a positive note. You've mm. obviously been in the industry for a long time and you mentioned earlier that um, these are the same complaints that you've heard since 76. Yeah. Um, what would you like to see different? Well, happily I'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> So there we are. <laughs> but we need your help. <laughs> I'm on, yes, I'm on. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. That I did not see coming. I did yeah, not see that yeah. answer coming. You know what? Honestly, I totally did. Oh, I was wow. hoping he wasn't going to go there, and I knew he would do it. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are in a, in a position where, and, and I get it so much, because it's just like, it's just so exhausting. Mm. You're it's just so exhausting. exhausting to have been fighting this since 1976. Yeah. We're sitting here having the same conversation that Robert's heard since 1976. Okay, you guys have covered the base of finance and all of those things. And for real, it is, it is sad for me to walk into a casting studio for a commercial and seeing somebody with 15 years experience having to cast for the same role. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. this is very sad. This should not be yeah. happening right. at all. Yeah. But I would say for me, um, the value of artists needs to change because I understand I am nowhere near being experienced as Sir Robert here, but I should not feel it when I'm on set that he immediately when he gets on set, oh, okay, we, we need to get him a green, we need to get him food, we need to get him all of these yeah. things. And when I arrive on set, they're just like, ah, yeah, no, go change in that shower, <laughs> kept thing in the box. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> like, I know that I'm not close to the standard, but I really would be honored to be treated like a human being. Just have a standard that, respect. all right, just please respect it's me. Really I'm here because I want to work with you guys. Please work with me as well. That's all I ask. Because if you, as the industry, don't treat actors with the love and compassion they need, how is South Africa in itself going to value us? What and did I just, people do during lockdown? Did they read? Did they listen to music? They did they watch Thank films? You. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. What did Ooh, people come that back hit me. to? That one hit me. Art. When, when we, as people, need nourishment, oh, yeah. yes. we go to art. Entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Entertainment. It's vital. It's an essential service. Yeah. Amazing. Guys, thank you so much for sharing, man. This was really... <laughs> 
<laughs> we need uh, <laughs> get the, yeah, I think I think they got a therapist on set. We need <laughs> need to speak to somebody here. Yes. And mm. uh, thank you to you guys uh, once again for tuning in. This has been DSTV Roundtable. Um, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Um, let us know in the comment section who you would like to see um, in these seats. If you would like the same people back again, because it's going to be very hard to replace any one of them. I can tell yes. you that much. Um, you once such again. A good job. Look at you. What are you saying, <laughs> guys? Me, I'm being some like. You are. You are. This is like this is real. You know, you, you guys are amazing.